Hello, I'm Sona, and I will be presenting piano music transcription using deep learning. The goal of this project is to develop a deep learning model that is able to transcribe piano audio recordings, which are typically in the form of WAV files, into piano rolls. Piano rolls are visual representations of the precise timings of notes played during a musical performance. Once obtained, these piano rolls can easily be converted into sheet music or MIDI files. An automated deep learning model would allow for efficient and faster transcription of large amounts of data, as opposed to manual transcription, which is very time consuming and requires skilled musicians to label the onset and offset timings of each note being played. Additionally, it may help musicians with disabilities who are not unable to write their own sheet music. It would also allow for the reproduction and preservation of musical pieces for, their, for which there exists no sheet music. The Maestro dataset was chosen due to its fine alignment between note labels and audio files. Maestro contains audio files in the form of paired WAV and MIDI files, where the WAV files are audio recordings and the MIDI files are corresponding ground tones. We decided to limit our data set to performances from four years due to limitations of space and computational resources. This resulted in a mini data set of a total of 408 samples. A split of 60%, 20%, and 20% was chosen for training, testing, and validation. The audio files in the data set exhibited varying lengths with a maximum ranging from 10 to 20 minutes. Due to space and time limitations, each of them were clipped to a maximum length of 30 seconds. Constant Fourier transform was then applied to each of these audio files and converted them to a time frequency representation. Metrics were chosen such that the spectrograms consisted of 960 frames and each frame having 252 features. To process the MIDI files, the Pretty MIDI library in Python was employed, um, which extracted the, extra, uh, the piano rolls. To tailor the data to our model, velocity information was omitted and irrelevant rolls were removed. Therefore, this resulted in a ground truth uh, for an a single audio clip having 960 vectors representing frames and being of size 88, indicating 88 notes, where each entry is a binary label representing if a note is being played or not. The model is a sequence of 960 frames with each containing 252 features. Convolution layers are applied to individual frames, and then sequences of 960 frames are passed to the bidirectional uh, GRU. This captures dependencies between frames. Finally, a linear layer is applied over each of the outputs of the GRU to scale the output dimensions of each frame to be 88, same as the size of the binary, binary label vectors. A sigma function can then be applied to scale the outputs between 0 and 1, representing the probability of a note being played at a certain time. We consider a note being on if its probability of being played is greater than 0 0.5. Four sets of convolutional layers is applied to each of the frames in the sequence. At each layer, a 1D convolution is applied, followed by max pooling, batch normalization, and the relative activation function. The following table describes more details. The output of the final layer is flattened by concatenating the feature maps of each frame to ensure a sequence length of 960 is passed into the GRU. The demo will be performed on a random sample from the 2004 folder of the master dataset. This is because um, none of these um, Folders files were used as part of our training test, test or validation split. So, um, for our demo output, um, we have our model output piano roll and the ground truth piano roll. As you can see, that they're very similar. Um, the overall pattern is the same, but the, our predicted um, output does struggle with some long term duration notes. Uh, however, it does perform well for the um, short-term um, short -term notes, as, as you can, can see. see. You, you can, can also, also audibly, audibly hear the results. Let's, Let's hear the original, original file. And now for the MIDI file. As you can, can see, see, they sound, sound very similar, similar with, with the, the, the exception, exception of some, some noise. noise. F1 rate, precision, and recall were used to validate our model results. This is because this binary classification problem is inherently unbalanced. 
At any given frame, most of the notes will not be being played and classified as zero. To further combat this problem, a weighted binary cross entropy function was used to assign positive samples with a higher weight. This re resulted us in achieving a very high F1 rate of around 78% for our test data set. This indicates the model's ability to generalize well to unseen data. It also beats our baseline model's F1 rate of only 16.3%. As, as you can see, the model performs very well in capturing the overall pattern and distribution of notes. It performs particularly well for songs with more shorter duration notes. However, the model struggles to perform well for longer duration notes, as you can see in the following examples. For example, it fails to detect the notes here, here, and particularly in this example, you can see that the long, the shorter term duration notes are um, detected more well than the longer term duration notes. Overall, the model performs well for staccato notes but struggles on sustained notes. This is surprising given the uh, use of GRU, which should be able to model long-term dependencies in the case of sustained notes. However, there might be some causes to this. First of all, the data set might be unbalanced, featuring more musical pieces with a larger amount of staccato notes. To resolve this problem, we could add more musical pieces featuring more sustained notes in the data set. Another problem is that the vanishing gradient problem might be present. This is because the sequence length inputted into the GRU is very long. It's 960 frames. This would hinder the model's ability to capture long-term dependencies. To resolve this, skip connections could be employed. Lastly, um, sustained notes are more prone to echo, so this may result in more noise in the spectrograms. To address this problem, we could perform more data processing.